If you want to 2X, 3X, 4X your results, you need to have KPIs, you need to have projections. And I've been thinking a lot lately as I've been doing private consulting with clients about projections and helping them set targets in their business that actually help them drive real financial results. In today's video, I want to walk you through how to actually project out for a quarter. Now, when you're first creating projections, and we were chatting about this in one of our private consulting sessions, we were chatting about you know creating a dashboard and and setting things up in a way that actually gives you clarity into the business. But before you can set out and create a dashboard, you need to understand what your key performing indicators actually are in a business that are ultimately going to help you drive real financial performance in your business. And something I've been working on lately with the clients that we do private consulting with is like, what are like the key metrics in a business that we need to look at on a weekly basis? So whether you have a partner, whether you are working with a, uh, an operator on your team, these are about five to six to seven metrics that we think about in any service-based industry business. And what I would encourage you to do if you're creating KPIs, if you're creating projections for the very first time, I would encourage you to stop this video, start this video, stop this video, start this video, and just like absorb in because I worked with this team that is doing a ton of, of transactions. They're doing a ton of, of volume, but they've never actually set projections for themselves. So what I encourage them to do right out of the gate is I said to them, okay, we've never set projections before. We want to create a KPI dashboard, but we don't have any KPIs. Well, step number one is simply just pulling out a Google spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through here in a second what I did in this private consulting session where they paid me a lot of money monthly in order to help them build out projections in order to actually put a diagnostic tool over their business called traffic systems and skills. And I'll get that into that in another video. But when we're thinking about projections, we're thinking about KPIs. Th these are some of the things that we want to think about. So let me go ahead and share my screen and kind of walk you through how I think about projections. So whatever I'm working with a team or whatever I am setting projections for our own business, I'm always looking at key performing indicators for each specific month and each quarter. So what I said is like, I'm like, before we get into CSU, before we get into a dashboard, before we get into any of these things, we need to understand, okay, as we head into the back half of the month, we need to ask ourselves, how much revenue do we want the business to bring in? We want to set that revenue target generally based off of last year's numbers. So if you have last year's numbers, you, you, you want to like really mathematically think about, okay, so last year we did a hundred thousand dollars. Well, what's a, what's a realistic growth target. If we're willing to invest back into marketing, let's call it a 20 to 25% increase year over year. That's a pretty realistic increase. Now, What's going to happen just through the power of looking at these numbers on a weekly basis is you're going to have radical clarity. So if like what I said to the, this consulting client that I work with is I'm like you and your partner, I want you to look at these numbers on a weekly basis and I want you to ga gather and rally your team around these numbers to give them something to work towards. So what I said is like, okay, so if you did a hundred thousand dollars in GCI last year, what I would say is like, let's set a goal of $125,000. Now that's going to be different for everyone. Now I said to these guys, I said, okay, you did a hundred thousand dollars last year, but in all actuality, we have, you know, $70,000 in fixed expenses, meaning like every single month we spend $70,000 to run the business. So if we spend $70,000 to run the business and we make the decision that we want a lifestyle of, you know, we want to draw, somebody wants to drive 30, somebody wants to drive 30, well, that's $60,000 in income. Well, we need to keep some sort of money inside the business in order to have like a reserve fund for a rainy day. So it's not like I, I said to them, like, you know, I, in a, in an idealistic world, if that's what you're looking for, like we need to raise our minimum standards. Now to raise our minimum standards, there's different KPIs and different metrics that we look at. So, you know, we set 125 and say, for example, if they did a hundred, you know, we would add, you know, maybe next month we go 145 because they did more and maybe they lost, they did 90 and we say, okay, 110. So I would do this based off of last year's metrics. And what I would do is I would just literally go in over here and I would create an equal sum category of these. And that's my core revenue that I'm looking to essentially bring in as a business owner 
or GCI. So I generally look at last year's numbers. If you're not, if you don't have last year's numbers, just, you know, you got to start somewhere. Start with realistic. What did you do last month? Okay, we did, you know, 70,000 last month. Okay, so if we actually put our mind to it and we actually look at these numbers on a weekly basis, is it realistic that we possibly could do a 20% increase? 100% it is, but we got, we got to look at these numbers on a weekly basis. Now, we got to determine what the profit is in the business. Now, uh, you know, the, their their P and L was a little bit all over the place. So what I encourage them to do is, you know, reach out to an accountant. If you're if you don't have a profit and loss statement and you're doing numbers like this, I highly encourage you to reach out to a to a an accountant that can give you an actual breakdown. And I actually met with my accountant today. They give you a full breakdown, a line by line item, based on your income, your cost of goods sold, and your your overall you know, hard fixed expenses. So you have a good understanding of like the PL. And maybe I'll do a video in the future about a PL. But like say for example, we want to run a 30% profit after net. Now where people get confused is 30% profit. I personally like to run, I would like to run a 30% profit after business after owner draw. That's because that, that's true profit. Like you know if you're if the owners are drawing out of that, you want that included in the actual draw of the business. Now, I would, again, you know, I'm going to preface, I'm not a financial uh, advisor. I've learned a lot about P&Ls from a lot of smart people over the last couple of years, but I would encourage you to reach out to a, you know, after you create these projections, reach out to a financial, like a, a CPA that can sit down and actually help you break down what these numbers will look like in order for you to run a, a, a business that has 30% profit after all expenses. Uh, that's a, actually a really well run, high run business. So, you know, again, what you would say is like, okay, you know, based on from a profit perspective, you know, adding 30%, you build out the numbers there, but then you go down further. And these are the numbers that I really like after setting the revenue and the profit goal. It's like how many appointments set and how many appointments met how many under contract and how many close monthly do I need to essentially do in order to create the result I'm looking for? Now, generally what we want to do is we want to work backwards. Now, when in the beginning, when we're creating projections, if we don't have numbers to go up against, we just have to create the projections to begin with. And we have to figure out how far are we away from those projections? So that's why whenever you're creating projections for the first time, you jet, you don't have a, a whole lot of data. So because you don't have a whole lot of data, you have to kind of free ball and figure out, okay, what are we doing right now? Or what did we do over the last three months? Or what did we do last year? And then how many can we go? So if you've never tracked appointments before, so in this specific example, they've never truly really tracked agent counted appointments. Now, if you're running a real estate business and you're not tracking agent count appointments in your CRM, I would highly, highly, highly implore you to do that. Because we're in, in a real estate business, where I've found from coaching some of the largest teams from across the country is the fall off happens here and here. So I have a fundamental belief that all conversion happens in great conversation and all conversion requires appointments. Like you have to go on more appointments. The more appointments you go on, the better you get, the more reps you put in, the more reps you put in, the better you get, the more money you make, the more cash that's in your bank account by the more appointments that you actually physically do. Now, is there a skills component? I talked about that earlier, traffic system skills. I'll record another video on that. But when you're thinking about a business, you're thinking about, okay, there's because there's going to be drop off from the set to the met rate. So say for example, on average, your, your, your age, your ISAs right now, if you have an in-house ISA department, they're setting 80 appointments a month on average, and you're seeing a 50% show rate. You have a decision you make in your projections. Okay. Do I either try to get them to set more appointments or do I try to get them to increase the show rate, but without actually knowing where the bottlenecks are by tracking and creating projections, you'd never know where the bottlenecks actually truly exist. So that's why I say just like when you're starting out creating KPIs, simply just put the KPI, don't try to be fancy, just put the KPIs in a Google spreadsheet and just have your targets. So what I would do here is I would have my October, I would literally just do this, October target, October actuals. And I would just literally do it like this and I would just track it on a weekly basis. 
This is the single easiest way to start creating KPIs for your business. And there's so many real estate businesses out there. There's so many service-based industries that would, like if they just tracked their revenue, their profit, the amount of appointments they set, the amount of appointments they meet, the amount of deals they have under contract. You know, if you're in a service-based business, the amount of estimates that you currently have out and the amount of estimates that you've actually closed. I'm telling you within the window of a like six to 12 month window, it'll transform the, the insights that you have looking at your business. Cause now you're able to work on the business versus working in the business. And this is something that we do quarterly. It's something that I look towards working on on a quarterly basis because it becomes near impossible because what eventually is going to happen is you're going to be able to accurately predict how many appointments your agents need to go on in order to get you sales in order to get them sales so you're going to be able to say okay on average this specific agent Need, is going on about 20 appointments a month and they're closing two deals. Okay, well, how do we get them on four the appointments a month so they can get four deals? Or how do we up level their skill and get them a better presentation in order to help them ultimately get to where they want to go. But if you're not looking at the business, there's two there's two things that I look at when I look at and I, and when I do consulting. I want to meet the agent, I want to meet the business owner where they're at. If we were to put all, if we were to plug all of these numbers, if we were to plug all these numbers right out of the gate into a dashboard, they wouldn't know how to read the dashboard. How they're running their business right now is they're running their business for, with a profit and loss statement, which is half baked. That's something they need to work on. And they're running their business currently without any KPIs. So rather than complicating the KPI, what I would encourage that you do is just throw it on a Google spreadsheet work with your CPA and work with your accountant to actually build you that dashboard that you ultimately want to see. Now, is there an element of consulting that needs to take place in order to make sure that you tell the accountant exactly what you need in order to grow? A hundred percent. Your accountants might not know your business inside and out to put the cost of goods sold in the right spot or put the ex fixed expenses in the right spot so that you have clarity and you have growth. But from a projection perspective, what I would encourage you to do is start simple because simplicity skills, you can add on to different things. We can take this information and we can plug it into another system like CSU, or we take this information and plug it into a system like CTE in the future, but we got to get you into the flow and the habit of tracking your numbers because it doesn't matter if we expend all the time, all the energy on actually building the tool and you don't use the tool because you're not in cadence you're not in a regular cadence of checking the tool. You're not going to use the tool when the tool is created. So whenever I work with a client, the first thing I look to do is to get them in cadence, get them in cadence of looking at their numbers, get them in cadence of actually physically turning the knobs and figuring out what are the five to seven key performing indicators that actually will push the needle. And what we found in real estate business and what we found in other service-based industries is it's an appointment setting game. And there's different knobs that you can pull. Like I said, in that Google sheet, like an agent setting an appointment might have a 65% show rate. An ISA setting appointment might have a 50% because there's a handoff that's happening. And oftentimes when you're passing the ball, different things can happen. Sloppy passes can happen. People might say, hey, I really love talking to this ISA, but like the agent wasn't that great. And therefore the conversion didn't happen. There's different things that can happen in a business. I hope you get a ton of value out of today. I hope you get the, the knowledge and the confidence that starting creating KPIs can be super simple. What are the five to seven key performing indicators that if you tracked on a weekly basis, you looked at with your operator, with your business partner on a weekly basis, if you looked at those numbers every single week, you would experience growth. Now you can get into more minutia tracking in the future. But what I want you to do and what I want to implore to you, business owner to business owner, to help you have the best Q4 you've ever experienced and head into 2025 as the best version of you, but also with the best understanding of how you physically drive the performance you're looking to do, is just start simple. That's the message I want to give you today. Start simple because simplicity scales.